Hi, Bree. My name is Ross. Um, I hope I can help you out with this. This is a pretty complicated topic. It sounds like you already have a good idea of kind of what goes on behind it. Um, so I'm going to explain a little bit about the, the background, and maybe you don't need that. Maybe you can skip ahead, and then I'll get to the actual answer that I ended up with. Um, I wanted to point out, so you were talking about a lower um, a lower estimate and a an upper estimate, and that's definitely on the track you should be on. I wanted to point out that where that's coming from when you multiply these numbers has to go back actually to an idea of area on this graph. So I made an example here of a velocity versus time graph. And if we're trying to estimate distance in, in a process like this, really what we're doing is creating rectangles. So when you're picking and choosing the different numbers that you want, you're really picking the lengths and widths of the rectangles. So in this example, if I was gonna do an upper limit, I would start off by drawing, for example, I would pick the, um, the 11, let's call this feet, right? I would pick the 11 point here and it would go down and I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's height is at 11 all the way across this interval from 14 to 20. And then I'm gonna follow it all the way back down there. Now what that's technically saying, what I'm saying by drawing that rectangle is, I'm assuming that the velocity uh, of this object from seconds 14 to 20 was 11 the whole time, which it wasn't, we know that. But to get an estimate, that's what I'm assuming. Um, and then I multiply the length and the width. So I know that the width here is 11, and the length is six, because from 14 to 20 is six. So multiplying those, I would get 66. Uh, in this case, sorry, the velocity up here should be feet per, per second, and let's call this seconds. So that would be an estimated 66 feet during that interval. So from 14 to 20, an estimated 66 feet. And I would continue with the rest of these. And again, an upper limit, so I'm gonna come from the right. You may also have heard this referred to as a right-hand Raman sum. Um, so in this next one, I would go to the 10 across this whole interval from nine to 14. So then I would do 10 for the height times five for the width, because that interval is only five seconds long. And then 10 times five would be 50. And then I would keep doing that, drawing these rectangles until I get to my last one, which would have a height of six over the interval from zero to one seconds. That would give me an upper estimate because um, you'll notice that the heights there, right, the height, this very first one, 11, was much higher at the beginning of the interval, right, at 14, than that actual point was. So even starting out, I'm estimating a higher velocity than I actually have. To get the lower limit, I'm going to do this one in red. You would start at the left hand. Uh, this is also called a left hand Raman sum. And you would say, for example, starting here at zero, the height of the first rectangle or the velocity from uh, time zero to one, well, it would actually just be zero. It's a flat rectangle. It doesn't have any area. Um, so the area of that one would be zero because the height is zero. From the next one, starting at this next point, I would go from the left and draw down to get my rectangles. Notice that that red rectangle is shorter significantly than the blue one, and it should be because now we're doing a lower limit. Uh, the velocity here would be 6 times this interval of 2 seconds from 1 to 3. 6 times 2 is 12. Now notice, again, what we're saying there this time by drawing our rectangle from the left starting at uh, the 6 is we're estimating that the velocity was 6 feet per second across that entire interval. In this upper um, estimate, for the same interval, 1 to 3, we were estimating that velocity to be 8. So that's what's happening when we're drawing these different rectangles is we're making different assumptions about what the velocity was during that entire time. And we would keep doing that for the rest of these intervals, drawing our rectangles, starting from each point from the left going right will get us that lower limit and, um, and that would get us our estimate. So when we look at this table of values, there's a trick to figuring out um, which values to use because you're not going to use all of them. When it comes to the left hand limit, which is the lower estimate, or not the limit, the left hand Raman sum, which is the lower estimate, you are going to ignore the final uh, value for your velocity. 
Um, you're only going to use the first, well, all of them except the last one. And what you've got to make sure to do, and here's, I think, the mistake you made, is you've got to make sure you're multiplying each of these velocities by the distance between your times, right? So I think you said down here that you multiplied all of the values except for 40, uh, 234, like you said. You multiplied all those values by 7. The mistake there is the width of each interval is not 7, and that was mentioned up here in the beginning, right? It's not necessary that the time intervals are equally spaced. In this case, the first interval from 0 to 7, that's 7, and you're going to multiply that times your first velocity, which is 0. So 7 times 0 is 0. The next interval here from 7 to 17 is 10. And the height of your next rectangle, the next velocity, is 154. Your next interval from 17 to 19 is 2, and we'd multiply that times 374, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea there is the lower limit, the left-hand Riemann sum, would be 7 times 0 plus 10 times 154. And you'd keep doing that until the end, where you do uh, 51, I believe, times 1837. When you do that, I got an answer of 132,253. Uh, and that's in feet. Now you did mention um, needing an answer in miles uh, and needing to round to one decimal place. I do think you need to convert that so you would divide by 5,280 feet to get to miles, and that is a decimal that you would have to round. Um, but that would be the lower limit. That's the one I got. And then for the right-hand limit or the upper limit, uh, the right-hand Riemann sum, you're going to follow the same process with the only difference being that instead of ignoring the last number, you're going to ignore the first one. And if you think about it, that should make sense. The right-hand limit or the upper limit is giving us an overestimate of the actual distance because we're using these higher values. Getting rid of this zero, right, instead of multiplying something by zero and that, adding that in, now we're going to be adding in something times 4,234. That is absolutely going to give us a bigger estimate than when we added a zero in. So in this case, same intervals. We're still going to have 7, 10, 2, et cetera, et cetera. But now the 7 is going to get multiplied by 154 because that's now the first number in our list. The 10 by the 374, et cetera, et cetera, all the way down to this 51 now being multiplied by 4,234, which is going to be a pretty big number. I'm not going to write all those numbers out, but I will tell you that the answer I ended up with for this upper limit or the upper estimate is 291,295. 291,295, yeah, 295 feet. And again, you could convert that to miles by uh, dividing by 5,280 feet. So uh, I hope this not only helps you to figure out, you know, where the error was and, and where you had gone wrong, but hopefully also this helps just to give you um, some additional understanding of where this process comes from, how it's related to a velocity versus time graph, and areas of practice. Cool.